when I made the presentation,
human brain, the visual system processes everything at a very scale long before it registers color, and even a way before it processes functions. So, major players with brightness or darkness, not color, um, learn to think in, in grayscale. A great way to do that, actually, is if you get like a, a bit of clear plastic that's red tinted. If you hold it up to your eye, you get a pretty close approximation of grayscale. Um, it's a really cheap way. I mean, you probably programmatically achieve grayscale if you really want it, but that's probably a totally nightmare for you. But, uh, so, divide your screen into three fields, the foreground, the middle ground, and the background, and make one of them light, one the middle, and one dark. Um, it's, uh, it's sort of like digesting their, the content for people. Visually, we don't want to think when we're appreciating a movie or something. So, try to think in terms of making everything be either a light thing over a dark thing or a dark thing over a light thing. Um, it, really, it really makes things work better. Um, so, all the Grandmaster paintings did it, and that's game developer 202. Obviously, that's some editorializing. I'm sure there are some great game developers and great these rules. Um, if you're going to break visual rules, just make sure the audience knows that you know wall stuff. So there's some Da Vinci. Uh, this is a great, great tunnel structure. Uh, I found something there. It's kind of clever how he has the main character in here to be again. But generally you've got the light field and the dark field and the and you know, and everything uh, works pretty well as a, as a solid chunk of shape. And then of course in it's, it's very apparent that they work very closely with the tunnel structure and have to work with the um, You kind of lose the character in this, but the important stuff is just pretty bright. Uh, the only thing I think they messed up was they got these halos around their lights, and so they can kind of distract away from the, the, the weapons fire and the, the high contrast characters. And this doesn't necessarily apply to really fancy visual games like uh, uh, PopCat does a pretty good job of doing light over dark and dark over light. Um, the bright stuff is the most important stuff. So here's a photo I took with my left hand just to show you sort of what's going to be this. Um, so now one without color. Still pretty readable. You can tell what's happening in the picture. It's not a beautiful picture. It's just a right hand color. We can remove the light dark information and leave just the color. I had to do some pretty weird Photoshop acrobatics to get that picture. But you can see it's pretty hard to read. Like the, the amount of light is much more important than the colors that are actually there. Uh, you can get away with some pretty wonky colors as long as it is color most of the time. Um, but we can we can saturate those colors and uh, it's still kind of hard to read. But also, in spite of that, it's pretty awesome. Kind of a cyberpunk look, so if you're going for something that has like a cool chart feel, consider, consider trying to do something like that. Um, but yeah, harder to read, definitely. You would, you would take some time to look at this image before firing a gun and reverse all those shooters. Um, we'll also get to that. Um, and then focus, what players look to look at, and if there is brightness or high contrast on the screen. They can work in grayscale, but other ways about colors. Uh, so examples that come to mind are half life and quake three were easy ones. Um, I think they do a pretty good job in in quake three and in, uh, in half life. I guess that's half life too. Uh, of sort of leading the eye with contrast and brightness. The brightest thing on the screen is both of those the character. Uh, although the that window is sort of bright. And then uh, Limbo comes to mind because it's for the most part it's all grayscale. Uh, it's a gorgeous game. They do a really good job of limiting themselves, not having color. Uh, by the way, if anyone has any questions, please stop and ask. Um, I tend to go a little bit quicker. But so, yeah, Limbo is awesome. So I won't be ignoring the tunnels. Um, uh, so, far of this from Google Images, unedited picture. Um, and you'll note that in grayscale, it's kind of hard to read, which in this movie really uh, failed in that way visually a lot. It, uh, the characters just get lost, and uh, it's not very stimulating. So now let's try and save it. And uh, all I did was I masked it off, and, and I darkened the background a little bit. Uh, the downside is a lot of that contrast that was there in the background. But uh, the other side is now we know to 
contrast. I bumped up the contrast on this picture a whole bunch, and it turns into uh, <coughs> kind of insanity, photocopier insanity. Um, definitely not, not ideal. So uh, that contrast being lost in there. So just a little bit on lighting. I noticed a lot of games tend to the shading goes to black and their lighting goes to white. And that's really boring. And this goes this goes under the a little bit. So every object has a local color. And it's a bit dull at this stage. It's got no lighting. It's just a, I guess it's a reduced color. Um, and that you may not be able to tell on a monitor, but that's a little bit red. It's just mostly gray with a little bit of red I can um, So Usually there's a light source coming from above and it's, it's a warm color. Again, usually. I think the sun are most light ones. Um, if you have cool lighting, uh, you can be interested in the effects on your audience. But in terms of generic lighting, if you just want to see to work on the sun, there's some up high uh, yellow or orange on the green. So now we've graduated to the, uh, the default looking material stage. Um, we've got a specular highlight and some shading and some lighting. So, find the light color, the rather than appropriate color to add to the shadows. Never let your shading go black if you have something to say about it or have control over it. Um, that said, if you want some black in your screen area, save your blackest blacks and your whitest whites for just tiny details that are really important. That'll really get people's eyes going to just the important spots. If you have a lot of white and a lot of black, uh, things can get almost uh, overwhelming visually. Uh, unless you're talking about like Sin City, which sort of relies on that screen contrast. But yeah, so with the, the additive spectrum, you can, you can add, since blue is the additive complement of yellow, you can add some blue to those shadows and it starts to really pop and feel a little bit more real. Um, so yeah, in the game you can't control your shadows, the color of your shadows, very easily. But you can control uh, what's called the, the ambient value, or the ambient color light that's there when there's no light lighting an object. So if you, you've got a yellow sun or an orange sun, you can throw some blue or purple in that ambient value, just a little bit, to, to make things feel a little more like in an atmosphere, in real lighting, um, visual injury. So for a final touch, you can sim uh, simply add some realism. You can add a generic reflective light from below. Uh, almost everything gets reflected light from underneath, and here we have some intense orange light. The earth is generally orange, so you can sort of fudge it if you want to put it in the same color. But uh, I mean, if you want to be really fancy, everything reflects light, so you can probably throw in some stuff where uh, one object is near another and they, uh, they affect each other's uh, light and shadow color. So that's pretty realistic. Um, so we've got our highlight, our lit area, and just like barely remnants of our local color. Um, and that's something to keep in mind when you're doing the juice maps, not to worry about them being perfect, because the lighting is just going to mess all that up anyways. Um, so lighting in a lot of ways can tell almost more of a story than the juice map than if you have a screen lighting. Um, so there's that. Um, but back to color. Uh, so there are two color wheels of relevance. There are actually quite a few color wheels of relevance, but the two that are really relevant to the There's a subtractive one, which is taught in a lot of schools, which is schools by cheap art supplies that require some understanding. Um, so uh, it's relevant to opaque paints, but uh, other than acrylics. Um, and then if you combine a bunch of them, you tend to migrate towards black or horrible murky brown. Um, so and there's the added one, which is not only physically more relevant, but also biologically. So I'll get into the biology in a second. So you combine colors in the additive spectrum, and you're basically combining them with what the additive spectrum is. So you, you, you add enough of them together, you end up with white colors and very close to white. Um, and, and both of these are, are flawed in terms of physics, just because our brain and our eyes have limitations in the spectrum of colors we see. Uh, hence it being real, because it's not really real, it's just a line. Thank you. 
blue with a little bit of yellow for the sunlight and trapping out the particles in the atmosphere. That's a very cheap way to uh, add green to the systems. Um, green is considered balanced color by many uh, uh, capacity for the quality of the green. So it needs to understand that predators prey and fruit. Um, unless you don't believe in evolution, in which case, uh, does that make something about it? <laughs> so more cultural, cultural green things include fertility, warmth, and refreshment. Um, there's far cry uh, game that did not make them feel safe for them. But it's afraid of you, it's going to be this. So just a little bit more on the warm light and cool shadow. This will this can make it or break a game visually. Um, you got the snow is a great example because snow is for the most part white. So you've got a yellow light on your snow and blue shadows. And it's super obvious. And it's harder to find examples of cool light with a warm shadow because that's not the most common light set. But I found an advertisement there that the shot was a cool light. I don't know if you can tell on the monitor there's a sort of a cyan and then a sort of desaturated red going on there in the shadows. Um, and I sampled those colors just to make sure. And uh, on the stunning conclusion of my slideshow, I'm, I'm real hooked on the balance methodology. 
<laughs> I think I have that. 